What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to a very promising, exciting, emotional, and best ever podcast of all time. Going deeper episode with Nate Olakoya. Boy, Nate delivered. Yeah, we talk a lot about overpromising, under delivering. This episode over delivers, in my opinion. Way over delivers. Nate did not have to show up and be so like raw and vulnerable and thoughtful and honest. And he did. Yeah. Also just like a gem of a human being. I always flag like when people walk in, how they treat people, how they introduce. Like he just was so warm a, to everyone. His energy is top notch. When I think of people who were like so nice to everyone, at top of my list would be him and Andy Grammer of guests we've had on this show. That's a pretty top tier duo. He was uh, really open. And I have a ton of empathy for him. You know, like these relationships are so hard. And um, well, we don't want to give too much away. But uh, also uh, my book, I have the hard copy here. Don't text your ex. Happy birthday. I'm holding on to it like it's my like <laughs> blankie. Uh, Dr. <laughs> Laura Berman, uh, Dr. Maya Shankar, and Kazi David and Elizabeth Wagmeister all were wrote gracious blogs on the back of the book. And they say it's good. I think the cool part about this book, too, I was talking to someone over the weekend and they were asking about your book or we started talking about your book. And she was like, oh, I'm like so excited to hear like what he says about such and such. And I was like, no, it's not about The Bachelor. It's not a tell all. It's not like some random like soapy whatever. It's like an advice manual. It is what we do on this show. And I think that like took her by surprise, but also like equally intrigued her. Uh, Elizabeth Wagmeister, uh, cor chief correspondent at Variety, wrote, Nick's book is the opposite of what you'd expect from an alumni of The Bachelor. And then she said a bunch of other things. But I do have uh, anecdotal stories about my life uh, in there. I honestly think it's a really good. <laughs> I think it's good. I think it, it's not a, a, a total waste of your time. And if you've ever listened to any of our Ask Nick's, if you are struggling with hookup culture, uh, if you're struggling with being in a situation, having a hard time getting over someone, Struggling on dating. Uh, I promise you that and a lot more. There's some uh, helpful nuggets in here. There really are. It just, and it feels Pretty. good in your hands. It's yeah. A, yeah, it's a nice, like you could, it's gift worthy quality. Like it's very aesthetically pleasing. It is the perfect gift for someone who has a friend who might be just struggling with the dates. It would mean the world if uh, you guys would be willing to pre order it. Uh, there's a link in the show description. There's a link in my bio on my Instagram. Also, the link I used um, supports local bookstores. Local bookstores. It's the, that's the link that's in my uh, Instagram bio. So you get the book and you're also doing yeah. a really nice thing. And it's thing. the same price. It, you get you get shipped the same way. If anything, there was a little discount. They give you a little 5% discount. Ooh, you so go. you're really like incentivized mm, to help out those bookstores. Win-win. And just you'll like it. I just can't stop touching it. Okay. It's just okay. like a really good feel to it. All right. Okay, before we get into Nate, though, we got to talk about Spitgate. I'm fully invested in this. Okay, do you think Harry spit on Chris Pine at I the Venice Film Festival? Listen, huge Harry Styles fan here. Love him. I'm dedicated to having him on my show someday. I think we had a moment running. <laughs> He's an amazing musician. He absolutely spit on him. But I, here's what I think. I think this is all PR. I think Chris Pine and Harry Styles are fast friends and they're just fucking, they, they fuck with each other. Cause you look at that, you look at that video once, first you don't see it. And then once someone points it out, you can't unsee it. I feel like you can see the motion of the mouth, but there's nothing leaving it. I don't think he hawked a loogie on him. I think it was just <laughs> a small little, you know, and I think you, yeah, that, that look that Chris has is kind of like, he looks almost like, it's like he's almost impressed. Like, okay, wow. Like, that we, we're going there. Okay. I feel like they're fucking with each other. Although spitting is a pretty, that, that is a, a list of like most offensive things you can do to someone. Spitting on one person is, is up there in terms of disrespect. You could throw someone's way, right? Spitting? I, I just watched an episode of Below Deck where a guy dumped a bottle of tequila on a girl's head. And I think I'd rather that than be spit on. 100%. I'll take the tequila on my head. <laughs> Spitting on someone is... It's very rude. It's also, they specifically name it as a red card offense in soccer. When I was doing my youth soccer referee certification courses, they were like, spitting is like specifically called out as like a, you're out of there right away. Oh, even it's, if it's just on the field? Oh, no. I think it's like spitting at or towards someone. 
Well, yeah. Because it's just like you're so beneath me. I also I but agree I, though that nobody should spit ever in public. If you're gonna spit, you better look around, make sure nobody can see you before you spit. Because I don't like watching people spit. I don't. Yeah, I don't think Harry really spit any spit, but I think he spat. He would. He would. You know, just now I'm like trying to spit on myself. <laughs> I. I'm not engaging in this practice. But it, you watch the video. How? What else is it? I'm pretty sure he did. For what other reason does Chris Pine stop clapping and look at his hands? It's so... And so what we're saying is that it is certainly intentional on Harry's part. I mean, how else do you... But I don't know why Harry would risk that because he's so beloved. Why would he risk his reputation of like... Being I don't rude? think this affects his reputation at all. Hmm. I think it's fun for us to talk about. I don't know. I also saw a, a tweet about, you know, keep in mind, like Chris Pine. So you have Olivia Wilde mm -hmm. at the, the end. The seating arrangement. Yeah, there is a tweet. I need a movie about the seating arrangement. Truly. Like, how did that come to be? You have Olivia Wilde, the director, her lead actor, Harry, also her boyfriend, mm -hmm. is not sitting next to Olivia. Rather, Chris Pine is. Well, I get, but I think had the two of them sat next to each other, it would have been like they're canoodling just like they were on set. They're I kind of see dating. why they would. Uh, yeah, but I kind of see why they would be like, we're not Maybe. going to. Yeah. We don't want to feel those. Like we want to downplay the fact that they're dating, even though it is weird. I don't think anyone thought anything of it until Harry spat at him. <laughs> well, have you also seen the stuff on Twitter about how there's a woman sitting two rows back who was recording it on her phone in a hat? And oh, everyone's I like, we need the, the ever. Yes, we need that. I see that. right No, is that a. Is that a, this was a person with a hat and It's glasses. a person with a hat. And everyone's like, what's the point of having the CIA slash NSA if we can't figure out who this woman is? Someone tweeted that. I mean, it's Chris's immediate reaction is this like he, and he's laughing. Chris is laughing though. And Harry, Harry has like a mischief grin. Okay. Now I get what you're saying where it's like, once you see it, you can't unsee it. You can't it. unsee it once you see it. Okay. But it's very playful. It is playful. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. I don't, I don't think Chris Pine and Harry Styles like, I, I'll be honest, I don't, I think spitting is a pretty outrageous thing to do, but Chris is laughing. There's and then you look at Olivia, she looks like she's also like, I don't know. Yeah, and he does kind of, Harry kind of like nudges him in the elbow. Yeah, I don't know. Big Kate is crazy. Other kind of out there comment that I wanted to talk about is Emily Ratajkowski, of course, in the news recently for being in some incredibly shitty circumstances where her husband, Sebastian, cheated on her. And she posted a TikTok recently that said, when he thinks he's a 10 because he pulled you, but you like ugly men. Heavily I mean, implying X is ugly. Is he, though? I mean, he has a unique look. But, I, you know, do women like ugly men? Like, I feel like that's a thing. Also, have you heard the, uh, what is it, like... Uh, Ugly hot versus hot ugly or whatever that is. No. Like no. Adam Driver is considered by many to be ugly hot. Mm. Which is the, yeah. So that's ugly hot. What's hot ugly? And I don't know if it's Bachelor hot. Bachelor people. Sorry. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Is it hot ugly? Well, okay. If you were setting up that Google, there's ugly Google. hot and hot ugly, I could see that as like Adam Driver being like, hot ugly and then someone who's like super like broad shoulders like athletic like kind of your conventional prototype of attraction but who there's something a little bit missing i could see that uh, bachelor people is like low hanging fruit because a lot of like that's so rude and so many of, of you guys are very hot a lot of good looking people like are like roasted you know their characters are characters are assassinated for like no good reason i just mean like every season of the bachelor at the very beginning when i'm looking around the room there's at least one person where i'm like Hmm, this feels like a printout of a hot person, but the ink was a little bit off. I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. I read an article. Okay, so hot ugly is when someone has like all the conventional stereotypes of what you would like find hot, like a Noah Beck or someone like that. Okay. Um, but isn't everyone's type. So that's where what people do you mean by are, type? Like you might not find Noah Beck attractive. That's like gonna be a hot ugly. Then that's there what are, I'm saying. That's then what I'm there saying. are But you're talking more about personality characteristics we're just talking type here then in the middle you have hot hot everyone agrees that they're attractive like, like nate 
uh, Nate, Nate, Michael B. Jordan. Other people have thrown Zac Efron Ryan into Gosling. the mix. Yeah. And then on the other side, there are there is Ugly Hot, who uh, is not conventionally hot according to beauty standards, but who some people may consider hot. So that's the Adam Driver of it all. I would also, maybe Pete Davidson would be included 100%. on that list. Yeah. The more you know. So anyways, uh, Emily Ratajkowski, he was ugly hot and now he's just ugly. Well, I I, I, I don't think she was calling him ugly hot. I think that I think the implication was just like he's not in her league in terms yeah, of Yeah, that she always knew he was like not from a look standpoint her equal, but Of course. She's considered by many to be exceptionally like traditionally flawlessly beautiful and he was a guy. Yeah. Do you feel like you always kind of know in the back of your head like who's the more attractive person in a relationship? Sure. By, By traditional, traditional Yeah, standards. taking personality, what else they bring to the table, like just surface level if you guys were to stand there silently and a bunch of people walk by who they would say is more attractive? I don't know. I think that only happens when there's such a discrepancy. Yeah. Mm. I don't think most people are assessing because often you're like, oh, that's a good looking couple. Totally. Yeah. You clump you know? them together. You're not pitting them against mm -hmm. each other. Yeah. <laughs> But when it's just like, huh, what's going on there? How did yeah. that happen? Then then I think you notice. Right? Yeah. No, I agree. Because if they're similar enough, then it's kind of just like, yeah, you look great together. How cute. Think we'll ever find out if Harry spit on Chris Pine? I have a feeling we'll hear from Chris Pine before we hear from Harry. Does this, makes you wanna, does this make you want to watch the movie? I, I get scared of scary movies. Is it supposed to be scary? Like scary no, it's horror. Just like, it's like a psychological thriller and like I have a very weak thriller. stomach. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yes, it actually, honestly, it, it yeah, I do want to watch, wanna watch it. Yeah. I do want to watch it. Yeah. I also, but I loved Booksmart. I thought Booksmart like, was awesome. The first movie that yeah. Olivia Wilde directed, awesome Booksmart, movie. I like Excellent that was, movie. that was one of the movies that I saw multiple times in theaters. Like I met my new roommates really? last night and they were like, yeah, I saw, one of them was like, I saw Elvis for the second time in theaters. I would go again. <laughs> you know, it's hmm. a, it's a high compliment to a movie. I think despite Olivia's spotty I think she's, pickle that she ended up in. I think she's getting it on the chin, so to speak. Combination of being Harry Styles' girlfriend. Yeah. The Shia LaBeouf, the Florence Pugh yeah, of it all. Like, obviously she's been she, like, ooh. She's been through it. Yeah. She's, yeah. I'm not saying she hasn't made any mistakes. I don't know. But, but it just seems weird that she's the one who's getting the out. most. Yeah. yeah. And when ooh. they're at Venice Film Festival doing press, like, those are all the questions. It's not yeah. questions to her as a director of about the film, really. It's just, yeah. where's Florence? Why isn't she Caught, here? What's the drama? Caught up in drama. Yeah. yeah, it's like the new version of like, who are you wearing? It's like, we know we can't just ask women super obviously superficial things. So we're going to ask about petty social drama instead of your art. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Well, we've made you wait long enough. It's time. Strap your seatbelt in. Get ready to... Uh, get your tissues. Get your tissues. Be shocked. Let the discourse begin. Ladies out there, if you're a big sports fan, I have something cool for you. And if you're not, I have something even cooler. Maybe you're dating some guy for new. You're in a situation ship. I don't know. Maybe you just like have a new love interest and he's a sports fan and you want to surprise him with some sports knowledge. Tell him that you're into DraftKings and you uh, just made a $5 bet that you think he should join and he'll love it. He'll, he'll love that you're into sports betting. You'll pique his curiosity. And you do that with DraftKings. DraftKings, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, is giving new customers a can't-miss offer to celebrate the return of the NFL season. And right now, new customers can bet just $5 and get $200 in free bets instantly. That's right. You can win just by having a team be up 10 points at any given time in a game. And you get paid instantly, even if the team loses. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code VIALL to get $200 in free bets instantly. When you place a $5 bet this Sunday, that that's code V-I-A-L-L. -L, only a DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Care of, get your personalized vitamins and supplements directly to you. Care of is a subscription service that ships high quality personalized vitamins and supplements and powders conveniently to your door every month. Fall is just around the corner. And as the seasons change, now is the perfect time to reset and think about the little changes you might make in your daily routine to better your health. Vitamins can be such an important part of 
uh, your overall health, but make sure that the right vitamins, and maybe you want to maybe put on a little muscle mass and you want a nice protein powder to go with it. Well, not all protein powders are created equal. And also the hard part about like vitamins too is like, you know, for me in the past before care of, I would get some vitamins, I would take them and then I would forget to like refill them and then I'd get off them. But now with care of, they keep your stock going and keep you on that healthy path to better wellness. Also, they come in daily packs. So it's not like, like sometimes if you need multiple things every day, then you have like a bottle of fish oil and a bottle of this vitamin and like so many things. And then if you travel, like holidays are coming up, that's miserable. It's and dummy now, proof. Yeah. yeah and it's like if you're out of town for three days, just grab three of your daily packs, put it in your bag. You're ready to so go. So much, so much easier because you know before that, before Care of, I'd have to like get like little plastic bags. That's such and a like pain. Dump, yeah, I'd get, yeah, it'd be so annoying. Now with Care of, for fifty percent off your first Care of, fifty half off your first Care of order. Go to takecareof.com and enter code V I A L L five zero. That's V I A L L fifty. Once again, get half off your first Care of order by going to takecareof.com and enter code. Vial 50, that's V I A L L 50. Nate. Nick. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I appreciate you coming, man. Yeah, no, most definitely. No, most definitely. We are excited to have you. I feel like the people listening are, are excited to have you. I feel like Bachelor Nation doesn't know a ton about you. Yeah. We're obviously big Michelle fans. We've. We've enjoyed watching her journey. We enjoyed watching her fall in love with you, getting to know her. But, you know, I know like AFR, but I just feel like a lot of people haven't gotten to know you. Mm. So my hope today is to get to know you, learn a little bit about you. Obviously, we'll have some questions about your experience on the show, the relationship, yeah. and, and see what you're able to share. And, and at the end of it all, I hope everyone listening just has a better understanding of who, who Nate is. <laughs> How do you pronounce your last name? I, I want to make sure you get that right. <laughs> it's Olukoya. So it's like, oh, like, oh, oh. Lou. Like Olu Lewis, okay. koi like koi fish, and then uh, so Olukoya. Olukoya. Yeah. Perfect. Easy. Olukoya. Easy. Easy. Thank you for uh, <laughs> break it down. <laughs> the break Olukoya. Thank you for yeah. thank you for uh, 100%. teaching me how to do that. <laughs> My name is only five letters, and I can, no one can get that right. So <laughs> there is that. Let's dive into it. And I apologize for anyone listening, but I don't really know this, and so I'm just going to assume a lot of people don't know it either. But like. Yeah. How did you end up on The Bachelor? Let's let's go yeah, it's, step one. It's kind of a crazy story. So I'm a really friendly guy and I go out on a Friday and um, I meet this guy named Mike and uh, Mike just moved to Austin like three days before. He's like, hey man, like don't know anybody. You seem to be having a good time. Like, can I hang out with you? I was like, by, by all means. So we're hanging out and the very next day we, we were out in the, the bars whatnot, having fun. The very next day he texts me. He's like, hey man, it was great getting to meet you, hanging out with you. Uh, again, just moved here. Don't have any friends. If you're doing anything today, let me know. Love to like meet some more of your friends. And I was coincidentally on my way to hang out with some friends. So I was like, come, come through. Let's have a good time. And so he comes over and he's like, hey man, like how crazy of a story is this? Uh, a couple of days ago, somebody from The Bachelorette asked me to be on the show. I was like, oh, dude, that's the coolest thing ever. Like, Go have fun, you know? And um, then he's like, well, no, I'm actually taking my bar exam. He's a lawyer now. And so shout out Mike, because I thought that's amazing. But, um, and he's like- Mike uh, a lawyer. <laughs> yeah, 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 Mike's a lawyer Go now. Mike, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go Mike. <laughs> and so, uh, so he's like, my bar exam is the first day of filming, so I'm not even going to bother doing anything. Um, how funny would it be if I sent them your profile? And I was like, ha, 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 whatever. And no so way. he sends um, whoever reached out to him my Instagram profile and she DMs me and is like, hey, you have two days to apply before we close this. And I didn't reply to her because I was like, There's, I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> you know, like it was my first first uh, reaction was like, sure, yeah. not, not, not my thing. And then she DMed me again. I was like, hey, like, no, seriously, like submit an application like that. Just just do that. So I submitted an application next day. Actually, I think the exact same day I had a quick phone call. The next day I had a Zoom call. And so things were just going super fast and they were like, all right, we want you. And I was like, yeah, hey, sorry. I got like, a lot of stuff going on, like great job, great career. I'm good. And they were like, no, like <laughs> we really want you to come. And I was like, I'm okay. Thank you. And I think like, honestly, I know it sounds stupid, but I think I said no probably like 10 or 11 times. And then more conversation with friends and family. And my mom's like, hey, what's the worst that can happen? My stepdad, what's the worst that can happen? Like, you know, go, go have this experience. What's the worst that can happen? So I, I called them back and I was like, all right, like, let's do this. And I think two days later, I was on a flight to, to LA. Wow. It's kind of so crazy. They, yeah, it was all kind of last minute. Yeah, very yeah. last minute, very last minute. And so, wow. so that's kind of how it happened. So when you ended up going on the show, I mean, you know, for me, like, obviously when I went, it was just like, 
kind of go for the experience. Mm. Like obviously I had a lot of very similar. It's just like, you know, what's the worst can happen? I'll go, yeah. I'll, you know, maybe I'll get the travel and, and things like that. But what was your mindset? Like once you decided to say yes, like what were you thinking to yourself in terms of like, what were your expectations of the show? Obviously it sounds like you didn't know much about the show yeah. going in, but depending on how much you look, obviously it was the format of the show. You go yeah. to potentially fall in love. There's followers and, and the kind of the lifestyle that so many of us have been, you know, kind of privileged to be able to try mm. to take advantage of. What were your expectations with regards to all of that and specifically your openness to like being in a relationship? Yeah, I mean, when it comes to expectations, I remember having a conversation with my stepdad about that. I'm just like, have no expectations. Just like go see the experience, kind of see what happens, meet Michelle. And if there's something, there's something. If there's not, there's not. If you fall in love, you fall in love. If you don't, you don't. But just like, just be open-minded. Like don't really expect anything. Uh, I've only seen one season of The Bachelor and it was Pilot Pete's season. I watched uh, probably like a smooth, like three fourths of the season okay. um, of Pilot Pete's season. So I uh, didn't really know exactly what I was getting into. And I, I kind of liked that. I wasn't like exactly sure how everything works. Um, but, but yeah. you had some familiarity. Yeah, I had yeah. some, some yeah. familiarity of, of how it works um, on The Bachelor side. Um, I did think it was kind of interesting, you know, like 30 guys, one girl. I was like, yeah, that's kind of, you know, that, that's, I think that's the main reason why I said no so many times. And just also just my, like where I was in life with my, with my career and whatnot. But I was like, oh, you know what, let's, let's see what happens. Let's not really have too many expectations. Let's just go be myself and, and kind of see if there's a connection between me and uh, Michelle. All right. That was a softball. Those are, those are the softballs. <laughs> <laughs> this is gotcha journalism. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> You're you're kind of a bit of an anomaly, I feel like, and you tell me what, how you feel about this because, you know, I enjoyed watching you on the season. I thought you came across overall pretty well, mm -hmm. right? But it seems like, at least with some of your critics, or there's this perception out there that I guess you just give off some fuckboy energy, at least, at least from the from the screen, yeah. right? <laughs> I mean, even us on the show, I'm. I definitely made some comments and kind of was just more like, I don't know, you're, you're an exceptionally handsome man. You, you really appreciate that. <laughs> I met you once before this and I was, I remember being like, you're, you're beautiful. You know, uh, I hope I'm not making you uncomfortable. No. Um, but with great power, but with great, great responsibility. responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now when I think about it, I don't really, you know, there's all these speculation. We hear a lot of things, but there's no real, it all seems to be just a perception of you. Yeah. Even myself, I don't, I don't really know you. Yeah. And so I guess I'm curious as to what do you have to say about that in general? And first address that. And sure. then uh, I want you to tell me, if you're willing, like what was your first reaction to meeting Michelle? Yeah, okay. Um, so starting off with the fuckboy perception. I mean, I'll be honest, like it's something that I've, you know, it's... it's Something that, you know, I've been getting called since, you know, I was like, I don't know, probably like high school, you know, just like, but not being called a fuck boy, but more so like you look like a fuck boy. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know if it's the tattoos, the piercings. I've had so many different hairstyles, you know, I'm black, six, eight, like, you know, and I, and I get it too. Like, I don't know if it's like a cultural thing, society, um, maybe it's music and media, whatever, but like you had the tattoos, the piercings black guy, super tall. Um, and it's just like, oh yeah, he's a fuck boy. He talks like everything that moves. And so like me, like, especially with the way that I was raised, that's, that's as much as it's just, just appearance. I think it's all based off appearance. I, and I love, like, it's something that I kind of like pride myself on is when people get to know me, especially, you know, like women who get to know me. It's like, oh, I, I thought you were going to be this asshole. I thought you were going to be this, like, just talks to everything that moves and just hooks up with everything that moves. And then girls get to know me and they're like, oh, like you're, you're really like not like that. Like you don't, you're, you're not a fuck boy, you know? And, and, and like, I kind of like, I've, I've always kind of liked that feeling of like, you know, you, you're going to perceive me one way. Like you just like your, your first judgment of my appearance is this. And then you get to know me and it's like, you're not anything like that. You know? So I've always kind of like, and that's kind of why still to this day, I got to like, I, I, I love making sure that like, like, sure, you guys can think I'm a fuckboy, but, um, you know, or, or my, my appearance is a fuckboy, but then get to know me. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's just not the case. You mentioned, right? like, how are you, how you were raised um, in terms of, like, how to treat people or we, women? Yeah. Like, what were, uh, did you have conversations like that with your parents? Yeah, just treating people. Um, I've always had conversations about the color of my skin with my dad, um, who's obviously a, a black man. He's, he's from Nigeria. And uh, whether it's just, like, you know, just 
my studies or my schooling, whatever, or even just like how I treat women too. Like just like people are going to always paint a picture of me, uh-huh. right? Um, based on the color of my skin. So um, having those conversations with my dad, like whether it's for relationships or whatever, right? Just like, you know, don't feed into it. And then just not really liking it either. Like I remember in college, like, you know, everybody has a fuck boyfriend. And I was like, man, that lifestyle is insane to me. Like I couldn't imagine like genuinely talking to everything that moves and trying to have sex with like every girl that talks to you. Like, it's just like, I'm, I'm a relationship guy, you know, like, and I've had two serious relationships and I've pretty much been in a relationship almost all of college. I was, I was in a relationship, high school, I was in a relationship. Like I've always been like a relationship guy. Like I don't like the whole like lifestyle of just bouncing from person to person to person. I'd rather just have my person again. You know, I, I, look, I guess I look like a fuck boy, but you get to know me and I'm just like, dude, that's not me at all. Yeah. Like, I'm, a, I'm a little softy from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Does that, <laughs> does that bug you though? I mean, cause like you've had to deal with some pretty harsh criticism from, or assumptions of your character. Yeah. It never, um, it never really from bugged like, me. like Bachelor Nation, especially like, is that yeah. something that you've. Yeah. Cause it never really bu- bugged me before going on the TV show. Cause again, like I'm just a regular guy, yeah. right? Like I'm just a dude with his dog living in, or used to live in Austin, Texas. Um, working, working in tech sales. Like I was just a regular everyday guy. Right. So when people would say that it's usually like in the moment and like a really small group of people or like, you know, we'd be out with friends and you know, somebody like, Oh, you look like a fuck boy. Like, I'm not going to talk to you. I'm like, whatever. Like, you know, just like little stupid things like that. So it never really bothered me. Uh, but I remember episode one hopping out of the limo and kind of like going on Twitter and seeing like people's first reactions to me and like immediately saying like, Oh, like, Fuck boy number one just just exited the limo or whatever things like you know it wasn't all hate hate obviously but i remember from like episode one it was just like now it's like people say like coming at my appearance as a fuck boy like just being like kind of expanded i don't know it was it was a weird feeling like when you're like broadcasted on tv yeah. and like then you see like okay it wasn't just like you know college or like you know end of high school where people were like oh and it kind of looks like a fuck boy it's like and it, it always makes me think i know i'm on a tangent right now but it always makes no, me think like good. i remember like my dads they they hate tattoos and they always said like you get tattoos people are going to look at you differently and i always wondered like is it the tattoos that make me look like a fuck boy like i don't know what it is Probably doesn't help. i don't know it yeah. doesn't help you yeah. know i don't, I don't know, know tattoos helps, I, have, I used to have a bunch of piercings i think people are also intimidated by a man who can wear jewelry well i wear a lot of jewelry <laughs> yeah. you know like i, I, I think like that's like, like a factor where you're like oh shit he knows yeah. <laughs> i mean I, I think it's the whole package but like if you have a tattoo it probably doesn't help but do you it, feel like your image has changed since you got all your tattoos well, I got him after having a girlfriend, but sure. I mean, listen, that, I've been certainly that change? <laughs> like because you're with Natalie. It's like doesn't matter. Well, in terms of like, like if you were like to like draw a fuck boy, I think you would add tattoos to the fuck boy, right? Maybe you're right about the jewelry now. I think because I've always I've been wearing jewelry since like middle school. That might be but that's it. just who you are. I mean, yeah, like that's I, I a thing. Like, I think it's just like imp- I th- I always find it very impressive. Yeah. Like because I feel like some men shy away from jewelry, and I feel like it shows that I don't know. There's a degree of like being comfortable with your masculinity, but again, yeah. it feels like a lot of what you're saying is that the fuckboy perception is kind of a projection of like intimidation, or that other people are like assuming because yeah. they interpret you that way, you must think you're hot shit. Or well, yeah, and let's just keep it real. Like obviously, you're an attractive person. You know, like people, great power comes great responsibility. That people. How just, many times can we compliment Nate's hot? <laughs> I'm just like, it's breathtaking. <laughs> um, but I'm just saying, you know, like most people aren't responsible with their power. A lot of people aren't. And a lot of men aren't responsible with the power that they are given. And I think sometimes that's, you know, unfortunately for the people like yourself who say they're relationship people and like, you, and I'm assuming like you're not a saint, but there's a big difference between, yeah. you know. Yeah someone who's disrespectful or inconsiderate of people's feelings, et cetera, et cetera, dating around constantly just like yeah, hustling exactly. for action and, and, and you. Yeah, it sounds like. Exactly. So let's talk about your experience falling in love with Michelle, if that's yeah. not too awkward. Yeah, no, we can um, definitely talk about that. Just because I guess, I guess I'm thinking, well, I'm glad you said that, but I think that audience would want to hear about that kind of your emotional journey yeah. of what it was like to meet Michelle and, and kind of like bring us back to that time. So I guess just like, yeah, what was it like to first meet Michelle? Like right out the limo? Yeah, just sure. First I impression. Know. I mean, just honestly, like her beauty, like for sure, you know, first time meeting somebody, I think you that's kind of like the first thing you take in is their, their appearance. So obviously her beauty, her smile, um, 
it's weird, but I'm a nose guy and she has like the cutest nose ever. So I was like okay. one of the first things. That, I know it sounds weird. I'm a nose guy, but uh, <laughs> I like a good nose. I like a good, I like nose. A good yeah. nose. And, um, you know, so I was like one of the first things I, I noticed about her was her smile and, and how cute of a nose that she has. Um, and yeah, then I was the first one out the limo. So I kind of just walked down the stairs and sat on the couch and I was just like, oh, like, I don't remember a word that I said, but wow, she's beautiful. You got engaged. Yeah. And sometimes people question the authenticity of the engagements on this show in general. And certainly, obviously, you've had people judge you for being a fuckboy. And it seems yeah. like people, my understanding of your relationship in general is people kind of doubting your overall sincerity. Yeah. Can you tell me the time and when you first thought to yourself that you were falling in love with Michelle and, and then when you actually thought that, like, walk me through your process of going from the guy who is like, nah, I'm good, I'm not coming on your show, to I'm going to get engaged to this woman. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's like a, like, I remember, like, just gradually, just more and more, like, realization of, like, the feelings that were, that I was catching, and those feelings turning, like, stronger and stronger, and, like, deeper and deeper. And I remember, like, you know, it's kind of weird, because Rodney was also somebody that was on the show. But I remember, like, coming back to the hotel and just feeling like, like, dude, like, I like this woman, like, a lot, you know? And, uh, you know, our, our first one-on-one, -on -one, just kind of seeing how she is. I remember, like, even, like, the pajama party where she kind of felt a little, like, left out and, like, a little disrespected. And then she pulled me aside and, like, let me know how that made her feel, especially coming from me since we had, like, a kind of a connection, like, a strong connection. And, like, just, like, feeling bad that I made her feel any type of way and just, just like, knowing that I cared about her. And it's, like, it's kind of, like, a hard, like, because you, like you like fall in love i don't know i'm i'm like what's it like kind of like an analogy like you know like when a plane is landing like when a plane is like descending like you don't really like feel yourself getting closer and closer you know maybe your ears pop or whatever but you don't really feel the sure yeah you know yeah and that's kind of like can i pinpoint like oh this exact moment i was in love i don't think so but it is kind of like i don't know i feel like it's kind of like when a plane is landing like or not landing but like starting to descend like you don't really you don't really feel it but all of a sudden you're on the ground when you were just like 10,000 feet up. So yeah. it's like, you know, just slowly, it's like all of a sudden, holy crap, I'm in love. That makes sense. Yeah. What about your decision to get engaged? I remember the day before, um, it was, I've always kind of just trusted myself in my decisions. And I remember, um, obviously the further you along in the, the, the journey that you go, that's a thought that like comes up quite often, especially when you're by yourself. Um, and I just remember thinking like, I can see it. I can see it. Like this is like let's take let's take the jump. Like I'm ready. Like this let's let's spend the rest of our lives together. Like I just I just remember just like just let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Like this this is something that I can definitely see and feel and I've never felt the feel, the feelings I felt and I was like this is something that that's 1000% going to last and like I know it's kind of like in theory kind of crazy but I was like it's not crazy to me like let's do this like this is how i feel and i and i i, I want to spend the rest of my life with you the part of your storyline was kind of famously your your stepdad saying that he wasn't sure if you were ready for this big commitment and then i think correct me if i'm wrong that you had like never been in love before mm -hmm. uh is that accurate how did that make you feel when your stepdad said that and i guess how did you know i, mean, I guess as someone who didn't hadn't fallen in love before did you feel like throughout your relationship that was like a struggle or you know what I'm saying? Like having never been in love before mm -hmm. and then getting engaged on The Bachelorette, like how, how did you kind of process that kind of big leap? And like, what was your thought about all that? Something that I've never felt before in previous relationships is the feeling of like, I want to do life with you, like through and through, like genuinely I want to, like I can see myself having kids with you. I can see myself getting married. I can see myself living with you. I can see myself like doing everything, like the little things, you know, paying bills together, yeah. you know, all the way to the big things of, you know, living a extravagant life. Right. And, um, it was just so easy for me to feel that way with Michelle. And I remember just like kind of holding on to that feeling because like I, I have been in a long-term or sorry, uh, yeah, long-term relationship before. And, those feelings never really popped up. And then with Michelle, they popped up so easily. And I, I have some friends that, you know, they were with a girl for six years and never really thought to themselves, like, it was just like, they, he didn't see himself like living with this individual. Then they break up and then he, he meets a new girl and they start living together like four months later. Yeah. Right. And, and, um, 
And it's just like, you kind of like when you know, you know, kind of was the feeling that I was holding on to as well. And even like my mom, my mom, um, my mom got, in, got, got married to my stepdad after knowing each other for like three months. It was just like, maybe the, who just cares? About, it. Yeah, I just yeah. felt it. I was like, you know, this, this is what I want to do. I want to, I want to spend the rest of my life with this woman. So, so for anyone doubting you, you were, sounds like head over you. Really in love yeah. with Michelle. I remember coming home and every, my friends that I, that, I, that, I, that I told and my family, like they've, they've never seen me like that. Like they've never, ever seen me just like so happy and just so like, like in love, just like, they, you know, they were all just kind of like taking it back. Like I remember my mom was like, this is real, right? And I'm like, yeah, this is real. This is real. I remember like the, the, cause I flew back to Winnipeg and my, uh, my buddy picked me up, dropped me off at my dad's house. And I was up till 5 AM talking to my stepmom about Michelle and just like, like, cause I, I, I just like, it's real. Like this is, this is it for me. This is the woman I'm spending the rest of my life with. And it's like having the conversation with my dad, it, just, uh, it was just, yeah, I just remember those, like just my family just kind of like, whoa, like Tunday, yeah. Tunday, like Tunday's in love. Like this is it for him. You know, my yeah, friends I mean, I can like, hear, I've never I, seen you like I this. I can hear it in your voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I guess maybe let's transition. Mm -hmm. I guess what, what yeah. happened? I mean, as far as, I mean, Michelle, after you guys broke up, my impression is you broke up with her, mm. right? And, and, yeah, and what so did Michelle say? She acknowledged that it can be really hard to talk about this kind of thing and said, I think where I'm struggling, uh, it's like you never know how much to say, you never know how to handle it, you never know how it's going to be taken. But what I will say is this is not something I foresaw and I'll leave it there. Which so is kind of cryptic, almost implies that maybe something specific happened and then... And then Caitlin Bristow made a comment on her podcast that said that she had been kind of like helping Michelle through the breakup. And she said that uh, Michelle was, quote, definitely blindsided by the breakup. Like, how did you break up with her? I, I, I broke up with her on, over the phone. So I know that. I mean, you seem like a great guy. <laughs> um, but if I'm being honest, like. Not the, not the best. Yeah. Um, like I mean, you know, she you want to think she's worth a plane ticket. Yeah. No, um, it's just like, is there like yeah, like because I yeah, you know you don't want to break up with somebody, especially your fiance over the phone. It was it was like a it was a it was it was it's her birthday weekend, and she has all of her friends in L.A. and uh, I mean, there's a our relationship was there there was a lot of just it wasn't as good as. Um, it, our relationship was tough. There was, there was, there was lots of up and downs, lots of arguments, lots of fights and, um, just not really clicking, not really seeing eye to eye. And so when it comes to breaking up with Michelle over the phone, um, it was, uh, her birthday weekend. Like I said, we're all, we're all here in LA, um, because her and I got invited, invited to this Wango Tango event. And from the beginning of the beginning of the weekend, um, you know, things were just kind of rocky. Um, they got even more rocky. Wango Tango happened and, um, her and I, you know, we got into an argument, uh, right before, um, doing all those press interviews and whatnot. And, um, it's like such a buildup, you know, trying to talk about like why, why it ended, like it's such a buildup, but long story short, um, the, the weekend was not a good weekend and, her and I are up late having very deep conversations. I think the day before I was having very deep conversations with her friends too, because her friends, I mean, they weren't having a good time either. Um, it was just a bad weekend for like everybody. Um, you know, getting advice, getting advice from her friends, having very long, deep conversations with her friends about our relationship and about her and I and our compatibility and all that. And so the last day in LA, um, the conversation was kind of like already heading towards a breakup, which again, it's, it wasn't our first time having breakup conversations. This is probably our, our third time having a breakup really? conversation. Yeah. And so, um, so I guess, were you surprised to hear about the, I guess the accusation of blindsidedness? I can't, I can't, I can't like tell somebody how to feel. So like if, if Michelle felt blindsided, I can't take that away from her. Um, 
But I know like the reality of it is that this wasn't our first time talking about a breakup. And the day I left LA to go back to um, after her birthday weekend, it was kind of like already being said without being said. And again, it wasn't our first time having a breakup conversation. This is our third time, like nearly breaking up. And so I'm, yeah, you know, I'm just, I'm frustrated. And so I hop into the Uber and like, I remember driving to the, to the airport, just like already just in my feelings and just like so lost, so confused because again, like we're, we're jumping from like the beginning all the way to the end. There's so much, there's so much in the middle to, to unpack, but this is just like, I, uh, I got to the airport and I, uh, <laughs> I remember calling my, um, my mom and just like crying in the airport because I didn't know what to do. And I was just like, my frustration levels were just like through the roof. And then I call my little sister and then I get on the airport, I get on the airplane and I'm just, um, I'm crying in the airplane, you know? Anyways, I land, I land in, uh, I land in Austin and I call my mom again, call another person. And, um, the last thing we were talking about, because the very next weekend was CMAs. Holy crap. <laughs> He's getting me teared up. I want another <laughs> The very next, the very next week was CMAs. And I remember we were talking to each other. Like, like I was like, I do not feel comfortable going to CMAs. Like I don't like, because something happened right before Wingo Tango. And I kind of was just like, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not doing this. Like, you know, like something happened right before Wingo Tango and like doing the whole like press stuff right before like on wet wingle like if you see those videos yeah, you yeah, can yeah. see i'm just I've, I've i'm been upset there before, yeah. i'm just upset and i was like i do not feel comfortable doing cmas so i land in austin i think by the time i land she's still in the air and i land in austin i call my mom again crying on the phone with my mom called friends family whatever i'm just like i i think like i don't i don't see the relationship working anymore you know so i was frustrated as hell and um crying on the phone with my mom. Michelle calls me. Um, I thought she had just got home, but she was still in the airport, unfortunately, because that just kind of makes the story even worse. She's still in the airport and she's like, hey, like, if we're not doing CMAs next week, we have to give them a reason why. And I just blurted out, like, we're not doing CMAs because I can't be with you anymore. So yeah, I broke up with her over the phone, which is a dick move, but like, I don't know. It just sucked. It was just, it, yeah, it But that definitely sucked. puts things into context. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, having to do all these like press things and the bachelor relationships are always tough. You know, yeah. like it, it's like even the best relationships, the one that have survived, I've heard, you know, everyone's gone through it. You yeah. know, like obviously the being in that world, you fall in love and this kind of obviously like very intense environment and those feelings are real. But like once you get out, like every couple's faced with just a, a ton of challenges and a ton, like everyone, like both sides, you know, yeah. like, you know, if you're the bachelor, the bachelorette, you have, all this pressure and responsibility. If, if you're in your shoes, you sometimes can feel like you're on an island and things like that. So like, I, to I totally empathize with, with you. And Yeah. What about the, I mean, you mentioned that wasn't your first time having these kind of breakup conversations. When was the first time? Uh, January 2nd. So. So a while yeah. ago. Yeah, like right after the public found out. Um, it, yeah yeah i know the relationship just it was just like we were never like we were never like it started off so great and then like somewhere it just like we just didn't we just stopped clicking you know like the communication broke down and like i like i think the world of michelle obviously like she's she's phenomenal i say i t say, say that to everybody people ask me you know when they, they they see me out like how is michelle she's she's fantastic like i i think the world of her but just somewhere somewhere down uh the road like I mean, even early, I guess early on, since it was January 2nd, because I just remember it like it was yesterday. It was just like, it was just like, wait, what's going on right now? You know, like I fell in love, I fell in love with this woman. And then like, it just, I'm not saying that she changed into like this terrible person, but it just, it wasn't the same super quick, like really quickly after um, everything was like said and done after the engagement, after we started like going into just like the everyday motion of lives and not like, this you know not not a televised relationship but like a real relationship things just started to like shift and i remember january 1st was our first like really big fight and then the very next day it was another really big fight and it, i was so freaked out um i remember uh, like we got home probably like three and i just i was like yo i got i gotta go so I hop in my car I, and it's 3 a.m and i just drive to like an empty uh parking lot and i was just up till 
6 a.m. crying on the phone with Rodney. Because I was like, dude, what's going on right now? Like, I'm like, ah, yeah, it was just, it was just so weird because it was just, again, like, I don't know. I don't know what happened, but like our communication just started breaking down and like something just shifted really quickly. And, and I think it just freaked me out. And then that's when I had the conversation, like the first conversation with her of like, hey, I want to be honest with you. Like after this last like week, like, um, like I'm, I am starting to doubt this relationship, you know, and, you know, but it, I wasn't, I wasn't just going to quit, you know, like mm-hmm. I was like, oh, let's, let's continue putting in the, the effort. Let's continue. But I wanted her because the plan was I was supposed to move to, to Minnesota, like two months from, from, from our first, like that January Mm -hmm. first and second moment. And, and that's when, that's why I didn't move is because I I had to be honest with her. I was like, Hey, after the time spent, um, over the last couple of weeks, you know, things have been kind of, kind of rocky. And then we got into like this really big fight on January 1st and January 2nd. And I was like, and I think I was, I think I left Minnesota and went back to Austin, like on the the fifth or sixth. And I was like, I just gotta be honest. Like I, I want to like figure this out before, I moved to Minnesota. Like, I, I think we should kind of put the moving conversation on hold for now while we figure out this relationship and figure out this compatibility because the truth of the matter is that we have only known each other for a few months mm-hmm. uh, and here we are engaged and I do want to live with you and I do want to like, like do everything with you. But like, I, 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 we really need to like focus on the relationship and focus on our compatibility and focus on our communication styles and focus on everything that you need to focus on to make a, a, a relationship work. And so that's why I didn't move in, in March was because of the conversation I had with her early January. Do you feel like in between the conversations where it did, you know, the conflicts that led to qu- very serious questions about whether or not to break up, do you feel like you were able to fully recover as a couple between those conversations? Or do you think once that kind of initial seed was planted, it was always rocky in a way that was, it never really returned to how it was before? It was, it was rocky. It was definitely rocky. Like, they, don't get me wrong, we had amazing moments um in between rockiness but it was rocky you know i'm, I'm, I'm not gonna and i, I think I, I i truly believe michelle would say the same thing you know like, you did you end up ever going to Min- minneapolis did you guys ever live together at all um no no we, ne- we never moved in together i spent like just a little over uh, a month um living with her in her apartment in minnesota oh, okay. but like we never like i didn't like but you yeah. you went there okay yeah, yeah I, so i i mean technically i guess you could say we lived together for a month what, how was that experience what was like did you get to know family friends yeah i spent a lot of time with 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 her friends got to spend time with family you know talking about previous breakup all your near near breakups like we we nearly broke up while i was there too you know so Again, it, it wasn't like it wasn't like I just woke up one morning. I was like, you know what? I want to break up with Michelle. Like, you no, know, there's it's a lot of thought and long nights and a lot of tears and a lot of just reason behind when I broke up with her. Who you were know? who were? I mean, it sounds like Rodney. You talked to a lot. Mm-hmm. Were, were there other people? Who did you talk to the most? Is like confidants in terms of you know when you were going through it. it sounds like you put a lot of thought into these challenging times in the relationship. Yeah, you know, I you know everyone kind of always has their go-to people who are your go-to people to talk to mom and dad mom and mom and dad. yeah my stepdad yeah definitely my mom and dad like just having like long conversations with my mom a lot of a lot of just like just a lot of just late night conversations with my mom and like a lot of just like asking her for help because of just like the confusion and just like i did this because this is what my heart told me to do and now my heart's you know, it seems like my heart's just not in it the same way that it was. And it was just like trying to figure out like, you know, like just the confusion, like what's going on in this relationship because I fell in love with Michelle. And again, it's not like she changed into this, like she didn't, she, we just, we just stopped. Like, I don't know, it just started dra- like consistently and gradually going downhill where we were just like, like, we're just, you know, it, it wasn't like sunshine and rainbows anymore sure. you know what i mean i'm just yeah. like so very late night conversations with my mom and lots of tears i remember my stepdad came to come visit me one day we, we go we go golfing we go get dinner and um on the drive back i was dropping him off at his hotel and on the drive back he's like all right what's up like what's going on here because like something's clearly not not right like talk to me and i remember just like just like crying my heart out to him because i'm just like i'm so frustrated and I have no idea what's going on in this relationship. And it's just like, it sucks because like, you're just so sure, you know, like, and, and just like, just trying to figure out like, 
how can you be so sure about something and then that just like fall apart? All right. So yeah, my yeah. mom and my dad, just having a lot of conversations with my mom and dad. I appreciate you being so open about this. I know it's not easy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Do you think ever like, you talked about communication compatibility and then obviously we talked about this perception that you've had to deal with yourself. Do you mm -hmm. feel like that ever played a role in your relationship? Like was trust ever an issue with you guys? Did like things ever happen or, or I think there was some insecurity in the relationship. I think that, uh, that played a, a, a really big role in, in the relationship, like some insecurities, I'm not calling Michelle insecure at all, but I think there were just some like insecurity issues that led to some arguments, um, you know, but talking about trust, like there, there was like a pretty clear moment where like, uh, I mean, Michelle's not a, like, it's not like Michelle's like a, like, I would never say I don't trust Michelle, but I know that there was like a moment where like I started questioning things because I, it was just like a confusing moment. And that kind of just led to some trust issues on my part too. So yeah, I think I think trust trust definitely kind of played like a well. I mean, I can't. What are you able to share what that moment was? Yeah, so we're um, we're laying in bed one day, and um, she's right next to me. We're in Austin. She's right next to me, and um, she's on Instagram. And I see, um, you know, I'm, I glance at her phone, and I see that there's a text or a DM thread with like a, a very very um, famous country music singer. And I, I was like, hey, Michelle's a, Michelle's a celebrity. Like, that, that's something I got to get used to, too. You know, it's like, hey, that's, that's normal. Like, celebrities talk to celebrities. So I didn't think much of it. It was whatever. Um, and then, like, 20 seconds later, I glanced at her phone again, and the entire thread is gone. So, obviously, alarms are going sure, off in yeah. my head. And I'm like, hey, like, I, like, I glanced at your phone, and you were talking to this, this country music singer, and now the entire thread is gone. Like, I have to ask what was that about right the story that she told me just made no sense you know like it just it was just such an odd story it started with like oh like he i deleted it because what he said made me feel uncomfortable and i was like oh like what did he say and she was like oh he, he wanted to go get drinks with me and i was like okay like what like what led to that um because this this singer had in, invited her because he was on tour or something in Minnesota. So like, I think it was after they had already met. Yeah, they, they had already met because cause they, they went to this concert. Um, her and her friends went to this concert because he or invited she met her. this person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they, she went to her, this guy's concert um, in Minnesota because he, he was on tour. And so he, uh, she like, was like backstage, got like a backstage pass and whatnot. And I was okay, like what, what led to like him like asking you uh, to go get drinks? And it was like, oh, we're going to go play basketball, like my friends and his friends. And I was like, what did he exactly say that made you feel so uncomfortable that you had to delete the entire message? And she's like, we should get drinks, was like, quote, unquote. And I was like, does that like, like, how did you know he meant just you two? Because you just said that the plan was for you and her, some of the, like her friends and, and, and his friends to go play, like pick up basketball or something like that. And anyways, the conversation kept on going back and forth. And I was like, hey, like, I do not want to bring this, like, I don't trust you energy into this relationship at all. That's the last thing I want. But like, I do not feel comfortable right now. And you don't have to do this if you don't want to. But can you call your friend that you said that you were with? And I just want to like hear it from her. And um, so she did that. She called her friend. She was like, hey, so-and-so, do you remember this? And her friend was like, Michelle, I don't know what you're talking about. And so I was just like, all right. And then just, I don't, like, just dropped it. Like, I didn't know what to do. Well, yeah, what like, happened after that? She apologized for making me uh, feel like I couldn't trust her. She told me that, you know, there was, like, nothing to worry about. And we really never talked about it again. Like, I kind of was just like, all right, I don't know what to do right now. So I'm just. You just didn't really, to, you didn't get it. No, it wasn't until like a month and a half, maybe two months later that uh, it came up in conversation. I was like, you know, ever since that day, I, I have had a little bit of trust issues. But like, other than that, like, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> you know, I didn't, I didn't know what to do. So I kind of just, it, like, I think we just like made dinner and went to bed. Like, I didn't, you did, and you didn't like a, was it just like you didn't want to fight or something or? Yeah. I mean, 
it was just like a red flag and like you know she had, she'd apologized she had like made made sure that i knew that it was nothing it was nothing to be concerned about but like the fact that the whole message thread got deleted i was like this is something to be concerned about but i was like you know like i mean i'm just like i don't know like i'm just i don't know i was just like what whatever i don't know it was like like i said like i i like michelle michelle's a very trustworthy person and i and i do trust her but that one moment like I remember like it did kind of play like a role of like it it just wasn't like a, a fun thing to feel and and I think that's why I was just like yeah I don't, I don't know I just yeah. I didn't really know what to do in that moment so I kind of just you know she she apologized and I was like all right and just kept it pushing I'm curious like in terms of because I think communication can be the product of so many different things but like when you talk about kind of an incompatibility there if you had to describe the specific area where there wasn't alignment, would you say it was like a lifestyle thing, like a long-term goals thing, value, just love languages? Like how would you describe kind of the specific element of the relationship where you started to feel like, oh, we're just different people in this way? It's a really good question. Um, I think we were just like genuinely two different people from two completely different worlds. There was, there's, there's so many different elements. Like I don't know if I can pick one. But I know that her and I have had like a lot of like late night conversations about just like like how different we are. And sometimes it was a good thing and sometimes it was a bad thing. But there was, there was like a lot of elements that like the relationship was just like tainted from like so many different different things. And it was just like there was like a lot of pressure. Like I can only imagine like because she would tell me about the pressure. I can only like truly imagine the pressure of being the bachelorette. You know what I mean? And this, so there's pressures of, of like to always be perfect there, there's a lot you know i can't i can't pinpoint one but yeah. i know like the pressures of being the bachelorette i think that i think that truly did like, play a role, uh, play a role in, in michelle because like i know like that like like michelle's like the most put together person i've ever met it's like she is you you saw her on tv she yeah, is we're big fans. phenomenal yeah. like she's just so put together so like political so well-spoken and she was very impressive as the bachelorette yeah yeah like a very impressive woman and i think I think there was just like pressures of being the bachelorette that once we left that world, I thought we were like, I kind of wanted to just be two normal people. And I think like there was, there, there was always this like background pressure to just be as perfect as possible where I was like, I mean, let's just be ourselves. And, and I think that played a role into like us not seeing eye to eye because, and, and we had conversations about the pressure. Like there's, I can only imagine, but we had a lot of deep conversations about like the pressure that, that she felt as being the, the bachelorette and like just like the the weird world because here i am just a regular dude from austin with his dog who works in tech sales here she is just a a a, a teacher and um and then all of a sudden she's the bachelorette and we're engaged and all this extra stuff but um i don't know when you ask that question the first like there was, i feel like there's a lot of things that played a role into our breakup um but the way you asked that question the first thing that came to mind was just like this pressure to like always be like perfect and and I kind of wanted to just be Nathan Michelle. You yeah. know? Random question. Do you know if Michelle, because we've all done it, uh, especially people in Bachelor World, some are better than others, but do you know if Michelle ever like would read like things like Reddit or fan accounts or comments? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I can let her answer that. Okay. I know. I know. The only I, reason why I ask <laughs> is because that can put a, like a lot of stress on mm. a relationship. And I think, whether it's you're just reading it about yourself, right? It's mm. it's hard to be in this world, and all of us, me, you, me, you've all experienced. You go from this normal person to, you know, a well, very well known person, at least in bachelor world, which is a big world, overnight. Yeah, and it can be really weird and a lot of pressure. And I always tell, like, if you know, if if someone has one advice for me, I was like, just don't read about yourself, you know, yeah. because it's you start reacting to the things that you're reading. Yeah. And 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 then I'm well, sitting so here cool. thinking, you know, there's all these conversations about who people think you are yeah. and the perception of you. And I'm just wondering if was Michelle reading all this stuff and was that getting into her head? And and do you think that was maybe playing a role and then in, in some of the challenges you guys were facing? Uh, I could see that being, I could see that being like part of the, part of the reason for sure. Deandra. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything going on there? <laughs> Obviously there was a lot of uh, dialogue about you and Deandra. Can you, uh, just clear the air or, or yeah. explain what, what's up with all that? When it comes to, uh, when it comes to Deandra, 
No, I okay. saw that because we follow each other on Instagram. She lived in LA. She's Nigerian. I'm Nigerian. That's just kind of how Nigerians are, right? So I just moved to LA. I messaged her. I'm like, hey, just got to LA. Um, these are the birthday plans. If you want to join, by all means, join. I'd love to have you there. And uh, then all of a sudden, there's a picture of uh, um, our knees touching. The knees. That, the knee knees gate. Touching, yeah. <laughs> knee, your knees were touching? Knees I didn't were touching. They were sitting on bar stools and everyone was like, they're a couple. Yeah. Oh, Their okay. knees are gravitating towards one another. <laughs> sure. It was just like the... The worst timing. It was just. It just looks so bad. But no, like me and DeAndra, we're, we're there's nothing going on whatsoever. But the optics are just like that looked bad. That looked really bad. So yeah, that was that was stupid on my part. Just especially just like how soon after the breakup like that. That was, the optics looked terrible. But no, nothing's going on between her and I. After you and Michelle broke up, was it like a clean cut? Did you guys have uh, conversations? Were there any conversations about reconsidering getting back together? Or anything like that? Yeah. I think the breakup took nearly a week to like actually finalize the breakup. Like from when she called me and asked about CMAs and I said, we can't go to CMAs because I can't be with you anymore to, all right, here we were done. We're like broken up. That took about like six days of like lots of conversations Lots of late night conversations, texting, phone calls, FaceTimes, things like that. Uh, yeah, and then then the, then then it, it got it got messy. The break the the the, the post breakup got messy, and so communication between Michelle and I ended. I don't know, maybe like mid July. Okay. Yeah, we were talking something on the show, and you've been very generous with with what you've shared. So thank you. Did she block you? Or because like, we saw something on Instagram and like the tags are gone. The tags are gone. Yeah, and honestly, if flags. whatever, like if you need to, you need to. But like, is that something that happened between you guys or, or yeah. do you know why if it did? The backstory of that is kind of like an upsetting story. Um, but yeah, she blocked me. She blocked me. Okay. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think I, I want to go into like the nitty gritty of that. But that, that was kind of like a, a low blow because we were like on the phone. You know, so that was just like it was. It was weird. It was weird. Okay. That, 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 yeah, that. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why it was a block. Um, if I'm being completely honest, because you know, I remember she she called me after and she's like, "I didn't know I blocked you. I didn't. I don't know the difference between a block and unfollow." And I was just like, "This looks. This looks so bad." You know, and of course, people went went crazy after she blocked me, but. There's like several different steps between the two, but no, I know, but you know what? Breakups suck. Break and suck. at the end of the day, you got to do what you got to do. Can I ask a quick yeah, question? Yeah. Just like in the, I'm sure you're still like processing and healing, but like as you kind of think more about this relationship, how does it impact what going forward is going to be really important for you in a partner? Oh yeah, you took that. Mm. Yeah. Well, oh we are all on the <laughs> we're same. All, we're on the same page. <laughs> okay, that's great. Like, that, that's a good. I want to talk about what's next for you and your what you want and your hopes. I do have one more question. Yeah. Before we move on to f what's next for you, I think I know the answer, but I guess the, the reason I want to ask this question is because clearly there's a lot of love that you've have or ha have or had for Michelle, and it's hard getting over your first love. Are there ever moments where you miss her? Um, like, um, I, Michelle and I, like the beginning of that relationship was probably one of the most beautiful things I've ever experienced in my entire life. We had so much fun. Like we were, that was the, the, the beginning of our relationship was the, the most fun I've ever had uh, with, with somebody ever. And I, 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 I miss, I miss, I miss the Michelle I fell in love with for sure. Um, and I've thought about this question before and it's like, I miss the Michelle that I fell in love with. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I miss the Michelle I broke up with. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. Uh, well, you've obviously probably learned a lot from this experience. What's one thing that you experience in your past relationship and your next relationship and who knows how many more relationships you might have to have before you find your person. But mm. what's something that you really enjoyed having in that relationship in your last one that you want to make sure you bring forward? And and then what's something that, or things that you, you know, want in your le next relationship that maybe you didn't have in this one? Okay, so the first one is what did I have 
in this relationship that I want to make sure is in my next relationship. Yeah, just, uh, you know, it's like, hey, it didn't work out, but yeah. X, um, Y, and Z was good or X was good. or I mean, I was just talking about the fun that we had at the beginning, you know, and just like that not dying out because we were, we were kids together, you know, like mm -hmm. that, that's, that was the, 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 the best part of her and I at the beginning of the relationship is like we were just, we were just little kids. We did science experiments. We'd like go out and try and catch insects together. Like we were just kids, you know, like it was just, so laid back so much fun and it's just like you know that that didn't last but you know my next relationship like you know i i definitely want i want to be i want to be with somebody that that we can have like just fun like that like the amount of fun that michelle and i had at the beginning of the relationship was like out of this world so that's definitely something that uh, the, the next the next person i'm with has some big shoes to fill because i like like i said it was like the most fun i've ever had in a relationship was at the beginning of the relationship with michelle and then the next part was things that you would maybe didn't have and that maybe you learned from not having it in this relationship that you think would be really important to maybe, you know, to, to have the type of, uh, of relationship that you hope to have. I don't, I don't want this to sound like a, like an insult because it's definitely not an insult, but I think like having, a, having more of a partner and less of like, like a coach, if that makes sense. Yeah. Did you feel like you had to apologize a lot in your last relationship? I mean, when, when you love, I mean, yeah, but we are, you know, the, we were just, there, there was definitely you know, just, I think we were both just drained, you know, like yeah. apologizing just because like, I'm tired, you know, I'm tired yeah. and I'm just like, I need to figure out what's going on in this relationship because I'm doubting it. And it's like, if we if we argue you know it's just going to make it worse so let me just apologize or so I, I did find myself apologizing just something happened and we just stopped we just stopped like working you know we just stopped working and it's like yeah it was like you know the puzzle pieces at the beginning it was like puzzle pieces it was like the perfect match and then just the relationship it was just like all the edges got warped and next thing you know it's just like we're we're not we're not fitting anymore yeah. you know like and Hey, not every relationship is supposed to work out. And um, I mean, this, this is, this sucks. This, this sucks to talk about this. This is hard. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, like I, like, I think Michelle and I can go to bed knowing that as much pain and as much heartbreak and as much tears and just how shitty this breakup was, we can both go to bed knowing that it was, it was hard, but it was the right thing to do. You know, we just, yeah. we weren't for each other. I really appreciate you uh, sharing all this stuff, man. It's, um, it's not easy to do. You've been maybe one of our most vulnerable guests we've ever had. So I really, I really appreciate that. It's not easy to do. So thank you. Uh, we do this thing called texting office hours where okay. our guests help people with along with us draft text are are you down to join us for that yeah let me get in the right head uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll give you a little quick break so we'll do texting office hours and we'll come back with nate get some final thoughts with nate and um let's uh let's bring on the caller how's it going great my name's nicole i'm 34 how can we help nicole Hi, Nick. So I need help um, drafting a text to a guy that I have been dating um, kind of since April okay. with like a, a short pause in between. Um, the goal of my text is really I either need this to like move forward or end. Are you in a relationship or are you in a situationship? Well, mm. so that's kind of the issue. We decided to be in a relationship a couple weeks ago. Oh, Okay. Um, which started off really well for the first week or two. And then um, the last like week or two, it's just died down. We've gone a few days without talking. The communication's really lacking. Um, I'm just not like getting what I need out of it, but I haven't quite communicated that to him yet. So I'm trying to figure out, do I communicate this and really push for it? Or do I just, you know, end it? I mean, I'm glad you called in. And we do call this texting office hours, but is this a conversation that should happen over text or? Well, I think that's kind of the problem is like when I am with him, I get really nervous and insecure about the conversation. And we usually have a good time when we're together. 
he's not great with like communication. So unless I'm like a couple drinks in, I don't really talk about my feelings with him. We, we definitely prefer you not to be a couple drinks in uh, every time you have to try to get on the same page. That right. said, I, I do, do no, let me ask you this. Your, your lack of comfort, is that more of a you problem or do you think it's a reflection of his reservations or both in the relationship? Um, I think it's definitely more of a me problem. Okay. Ever since you've defined the relationship, what are the biggest things you feel like you're missing? Well, I feel like we kind of, we jumped into it um, pretty quickly. So we actually took like a break of dating for a couple months. And then, um, you know, he got drunk and texted me all these amazing things of how much he missed me and liked me and wanted to try again. And then we started talking for a week, got together to really talk. And that's kind of when we solidified, like, let's try being in a relationship. Okay. So since then, I would say the first week was really good. I was, you know, he was texting me sweet messages that he was thinking about me. He was asking me out to dinner. It was going well. And then the next week or two, it just kind of slowed down and slowed down. I don't know if part of it is like me not giving enough because I, I like if I feel him push back or pull back, then I pull back. Okay. And I think he needs someone that's really like putting in the effort. But if I'm not getting that reciprocated, then I'm going to pull back and not give much. Have you shared that bit of information with him yet? No. Okay. Well. And so the reason why I'm trying to figure out this text thing is because I know that I can be like more honest and clear with my words if I text it. Okay. And I also don't know if it's just too soon and if it's just, if I just need to chill out and... (sighs) Too soon for what? To be having like these more serious conversations. You've been dating this guy since April. Well, yeah. So (laughs) in June, we kind of stopped talking like for no reason. What do you mean for no reason? We were in different towns. So I was going to be moving to his town when we first started dating. So the first two months of us dating we were two and a half hours away Mm -hmm. and he had expressed to me that like, he didn't want to get emotionally attached to me unless, unless I was for sure moving at the time I was applying for jobs. I wasn't like for sure moving. So I think kind of what happened, like our last date toward the end mid June was, um, him kind of expressing to me, like, you know, summer's going to be busy and I don't know, it, it, it didn't really go I didn't think we were going to stop talking. I just thought we were going to kind of not see each other for a little while. And then we kept talking for a week, but I could tell I was the one putting in the effort. He wasn't really responding much. So we just stopped talking. Like I just didn't reply to one of his texts and he didn't text me. Okay. Okay. Red flag, I guess, for both of you. How did you guys start talking again? So this is where I'm feeling really insecure. So after a couple of weeks of that, of us not talking, I sent a message to him saying like, I don't know what happened. We had something good. I put the ball in your court or I felt like I did. I'm just looking for closure. And he didn't respond to me. Okay. And then like a month and a half later, I moved to where he lives and saw him back on the dating app. And I had to drive by his house every day when, well, not every day, but multiple times on my way places. So I would see his house, see his truck, see that, you know, no other cars are there. So I'm on the dating app. So I actually reached out to him again. Okay. And you're like, Hey, I'm here. I was like, Hey, throwing my cards on the table. I still think about you. If there's anything left on your end, like I move back if you want to get together. What do you say? He said, yeah, he still thinks about me too. And then we made plans to get together. And then that's when he got drunk and said all those I really like you. I miss you. I want you to be my girlfriend. Like all this stuff that I wasn't really replying to, like, because I knew he was drunk. Defining the relationship came from him being drunk? Um, So it came from after those texts we got together. Like the next day, I kind of messaged him, like, how are you feeling? He's like, good. I'm like, do you still feel the same way as you did last night? And he's like, yes, but you want to talk about about it in person. So I'll wait till we get together. We have plans to get together. So then... We, ha- we actually had like gone out to dinner once, didn't talk about it, and then talked about it the next time that we got together. Yeah, it's kind of a lot. And we haven't talked in a couple days. I was out of town for the weekend, and it was just like very short texts. Looking back, I'm like, I didn't really give him anything in those texts. He didn't really give me anything in those texts. So I don't even know like what to 
say to him today? You two clearly aren't communicating. You feel a lack of communication. And it sounds like you just want to like calmly like have a conversation with him. That's that's just like bare minimum. Yeah, just get on the same page. Yeah. So I, I don't want you to feel like you're trying to pick a fight or you're you have some big ask from him. You know. Also that, don't question if it's too soon to have the conversations, I think was maybe. Yeah, it's not yes. Yeah. Th- it's not too soon to have like a baseline conversation to talk about like ex- literally, we're talking about expectations here, right? Expectations, boundaries, expectations how much you want to talk, boundaries of like how much maybe personal time you guys both both might need. You know, these are like baseline conversations to have. You guys just defined the relationship a couple weeks ago. And chances are you probably didn't have like a ton of conversations after you to define that about what that means in terms of like how much time we spend together. And I know everyone likes to think this like, well, we'll just figure it out. We'll just let it happen organically. You know, I don't know what's going on in your life or his life, but we all have lives. You're, you said you're 34. Yeah. Right. So you got a life, I'm guessing. So like, yeah. how does he fit into your life? How do you fit into his? These are conversations we need to have. Would you feel comfortable sending a text saying that you would like to have a conversation? Because I, I would still like you for to have this conversation in person. And to be in a relationship with someone, you, you're going to have to start being able to have these conversations in person. Yeah. But I get like, maybe it's, it's hard to bring up. Like sometimes you're just like, hey, can we talk? And maybe that text is something like, you want to bring up the fact that it's just like, and maybe you offer something. I have a tendency of doing this and I really like you. So I don't want to do this with you. And that is the pullback thing. But I am noticing that like, I'm just, I'm feeling some distance. Maybe it's me, but I'd love to, not now, but like sometimes we see each other, just kind of talk about like, you know, what works for you. And because you're, we're talking about like how much time and, and, and alone, how much time together and how much alone time and how much communication. These are just expectations. So you just want to talk about your expectations with each other. And yeah. c- would you feel comfortable just sending him a text saying that you'd like to talk about it? Because that to me is yeah. ideal. I mean, like that like makes me sweaty. You just say <laughs> that. I'm like, <laughs> I feel like it's like the fear of like, okay, I'm too like needy or like. No expecting too much you're just a human being who just wants just wants to be on the same page it's yeah it also it takes a lot to be secure in a relationship and it sounds like some of the things that you're describing like you're describing moments where he really like validated you but with the qualifier behind it and so it sounds like you maybe feel pulled in both directions of like you have on one hand all the ways that he is really kind of showing up as the uh, ready to be boyfriend but then you also have these underlying ways where you don't aren't fully able to trust it and receive it and like that's such a difficult position to be in i just went through something like this and all of my girlfriends who are either dating whether they're like in a relationship or just meeting new people like this is the common struggle that everyone's going through of like wanting something wanting to stand up for what you deserve but then just like you said like don't want to push him away don't want to be too much like gonna be the cool chill girl and it's like you're balancing this freaking tightrope and it's impossible (laughs) yeah Yeah. also it doesn't sound like communication is your favorite thing in the world um it doesn't sound like it's his either so this is a new relationship but we are you know you have to be honest with yourself about compatibility as well so it's either going to be something you have to challenge yourself to get better at and then be, you know, someone's got to take charge. Yeah. Or maybe maybe you guys aren't super compatible. You know, maybe your best match would be someone who has a strength in something like this, who's just like, hey, let's get it out. Let's talk about it. Let's just, I see you're struggling. Let's, let's just sit down and talk. Not everyone's good with that. I'm sure you bring a lot of like great characteristics to any relationship you're going to be in. And every relationship, you're going to be having your strengths and your weaknesses. And obviously, you want to find people that kind of help balance each other out. Like, it's not our partner's job to, like, carry the weight or fix us. But it is nice to have a partner that, like, you know, balances out our weaknesses and vice versa. So, you know, either we need to figure out how you guys can get on this page or maybe there's a recognition of, like, maybe maybe this... Maybe this as good as he is and as much as I like him and all these other good things, but like communication is a pretty big deal in relationships. And I struggle bringing up things and it would be nice to have a partner that makes it really a real comfortable environment to talk. So yeah. that's something you want to consider too. Yeah. But for now, I think let's just try to have that conversation and see, because we're talking about, you know, we're talking about the basics here, love languages, 
You know, what's your love language? What's his love language? What makes you feel loved? And how do you like to love? What makes him feel loved? And how does he like to love? And right now, you're not on the same page. Like he, does he, could he even answer the question of how you feel loved? Yeah. Could you I answer mean, that question? We both know feels? each other's, but it's really funny because like he says his is words of affirmation. Uh-huh. And I'm like, you don't give me. That's how, Words of but most people, when they say, what's your love language, that's how they, they, their first answer is how they feel loved. Yeah. And that's, and, and so I tried to do that a lot in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm not a words of affirmation person. So I, I was like really trying to, and, um, but I didn't get anything in return. So I was like, okay, I'm making you feel real good here, but like, so what's your love I'm language? over here questioning how you feel. Did you, it was yours words of affirmation. Like, what did you say My to him? physical touch. Okay. And I, and I feel like he did that really well in the beginning as well. But now he's pulled back on that a lot. Like okay. our last few dates have ended with like a hug and a peck goodbye and like yeah. nothing more, you know, not holding hands, nothing like that. Yeah. I think we just have to, you offering some vulnerability of being like, listen, I, I have a tendency of pulling back when I feel like someone else is pulling back. And maybe that's just me, but like, I'm just sensing this, like, it's also yeah. your gut talking. Like, you're not crazy. Like, you know, yeah. you know, you just defined a relationship two weeks ago. You guys should be like all over each other. Right. Like, everyone's That's- different, but like, you know, what you're sensing is, I don't know what's going on, but you're not, something's going on. Yeah. You know, and maybe it could be, maybe he's just processing it. Maybe he hasn't been in a relationship in a long time and he's just like having not cold feet, but just a little anxiety. I don't know. And that could yeah. be normal and he can get over that anxiety. But you both, you guys, you're going to have to find a way to like help each other work through this anxiety because like you guys both pulling away and not communicating, this is like a disaster waiting to happen. Well, yeah, I was talking to my friend. I'm like, I'm pretty sure if I just don't text him, he's just never going to text me again. Like we haven't talked in three days. Neither of us are reaching Do you really out feel that other. way? Is that like, like you truly feel that way? Or are you just like making a joke? Because if you truly I mean, feel honestly, that way, that's kind of t- because. I mean, it has been three days. We haven't talked. He knew I got home yesterday from out of town. So um, your new boyfriend, who you've died in a relationship <laughs> with, defined a relationship with two weeks ago, you haven't spoken with in three days? No, we haven't talked since fr- Friday. Do you have any idea Friday, what he's yeah. doing right now? Do you know where your kids are? At? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any idea what he's doing right now? No. I mean, I think he's at home. Yeah. Let's just, let's just text him and just be like, hey, Let's start there. Just say, hey. I mean, yeah. How's it going? Be like, I mean, it's the fact that you haven't texted in three days. I think if you frame the whole conversation as like a, are we compatible as opposed to like, one person needs to do this, the other person is entitled to do that, then like, I think it's fair to say, like, for me, someone who I'm compatible with, like, needs to take initiative because you've been showing all the initiative. And again, in terms of not feeling secure in a relationship, like, that's a huge factor in it. And so yeah. I think it's like maybe, I don't know, maybe in this text trying to like plant the seed of like an overall thing of what this conversation is about. So that way he can have a little bit of time to like think about it without getting too much into it via text. Yeah, I would start with like, hey, hope you had a great weekend. I see that we're doing this thing again. (laughs) (laughs) And I I don't want it to like, yeah, just kind of acknowledge what already happened. You guys like stopped talking and you haven't talked to your new boyfriend in three days. So I don't, I, I definitely don't think you should be like send him the, what's up text kind of like what's going on i really think that you should be like hey hope you had a great weekend i'd love to see you this week and i hate feeling distance around you do you have an idea yeah okay, okay. Man, got an no idea. bad ideas in brainstorming this is just a starting point but what if it was like uh hey like to be totally honest i've been kind of hoping you would send me a text to ask about how my weekend was um yeah i don't know what would you if you need if you got a text like that yeah nicole i don't know this doesn't this doesn't sound too too good to me if I'm being completely honest with you like if if I were in your shoes I'd send a text something uh, something somewhere along the lines of like hey uh, we haven't spoken three days and we're supposed to be in a relationship I'm not really sure where to go from here do you have a minute to talk I'm not really sure if I would like do the whole in-person thing because if I'm being honest with you this doesn't sound like something that you need to waste your time to get ready and go get dinner you know just like a quick phone call and like hey like we we just we, we said that we were in a relationship about two weeks ago. And in those two weeks, we haven't spoken for the last three. Like, just just be honest. Like, what, what's going on? Like, is this still something you want to do? If his answer is yes, then it's like, well, why aren't we talking? 
you know, it's been three days. If the answer is no, well then, you know, that like, you know, hey, you know, on to the next, you know? Well, I was just going to say, then I, like, if his answer is yes, then I can change it to like, okay, yeah. do you want to so, get yeah. together? I actually, yeah. after yeah. hearing yeah. Nate talk, I actually think that's a, a perfect answer because I think we're, I'm trying to give, I think we're giving a little bit too much benefit of the doubt. You haven't talked to this guy in three days. So like, kind of like, hey, we haven't talked in three days, like is, you know, whatever, what, whatever you said was perfect. Yeah, like what's, where are we, where are we going from here? Yeah. You know? If he says yes, the only thing I would disagree, the only thing I would change, I would adjust, then I would like try to turn it positive a little bit, be like, well, I'd love to see you. Think like, great. I was hoping you would say that. Yeah. I'd love to see you early this week. And I would love it if we could just talk about how we can like, better get on the same page and avoid this, like avoid these like gaps because like, or just like, I want to just figure out like, I'm just a little confused about our expectations, how much time we should or shouldn't spend together. And I'd love to like talk with you about that in person. And if he's not down, if that's like too much for him, like, trust me, this is not, this guy's not worth your time. Yeah. I hate that you've been sitting, waiting for him to text you for three days. Yeah. Cause it sounds like you, you, maybe you have a little bit. Yeah. And that's not fair to you. Right. I, I think, like Nate said, we shoot him a text. Say, what did you say, Nate? Something along the lines of like, hey, I know that we we spoke two weeks ago about how we want to be in a relationship or that we're in a relationship, sorry, but we haven't spoken to each other in three days. I'm not entirely sure how to take that. And then just see kind like, of- and it, Yeah, I'm not, how to, I'm not sure how to take that. Is this something you still want? Yeah. Just, I honestly, let's just get to it. Let's just, <laughs> right? And then if he says yeah. yes, then try to turn it into a positive- I was hope good. I'm glad you feel that way. How about like, I can't wait to see you, but I'd love to talk about how we can just make sure we just get on the same page. I don't want either of us to feel confused about how much time we spend or don't spend together. Okay. Make it about us if he says yes. And if he says, okay. if it gives you the, oh, I'm just blah, blah, blah. Honestly, if it gives you any of that, I wouldn't bother with any long drawn out conversation. Okay. It sounds like you've put the effort here doesn't seem like this relationship's like in, headed in the right direction. If you do start talking again, you got to challenge yourself and each other to communicate more. Okay. If this doesn't work out, I don't think like you're losing anything special, but okay. try to challenge yourself to, you know, just get better at those, what should be kind of baseline conversations. And, you know, when you're out there dating, you know, some, it might be like dating a real chatty Kathy might get annoying, but they might help communicate too. Someone who's like easy going, like, you know, on dates, you know, if you share a vulnerability and if they don't share one back, red flag. Yeah. You know, so early in dating, maybe not the first date, don't tell them like everything about yourself, but you're on a second or third date with a new guy and you want to be like, is this guy someone I can communicate with? Share a vulnerability, you know, no, you know, nothing yeah. super personal. And the appropriate response of any human who's mature enough to like communicate in a relationship would say something like, oh, I'm sorry, I had to go through that. And then offer maybe something else. They would empathize. And it might be someone like you, you know, at this point, like you could really benefit from having a partner who's, who, who sees that as a strength in themselves and not a weakness. Yeah. And that might be something that you might want to look for in the future if it doesn't work out with uh, Mr. Ivan talked to in three days. Okay. All Great. Right. All right. Was this helpful? Yeah, very helpful. Thank you. All right. Uh, well, keep us posted. We uh, very much want to know where this goes. We're invested in your journey. And don't tell yourself you're a burden. Yeah. You're not a burden. <laughs> these are you, these are basic needs and expectations that you are entitled, every, anyone is entitled to. Like, you shouldn't feel confused in a relationship. You shouldn't. Yeah. You know, and if you do, it happens, but it's you, you should at least feel like it's safe to address. Because you yeah. know you would do that for him. Yeah. You know if there were things like that for him, you would do it in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. and so, like, oh my God, let's talk about it. Come on over. That's great. Yeah, a thousand percent. Yeah. 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 So if, you should be able to expect the same in return. Yeah. And okay. that's a flaw in, in him, not you, if, if it doesn't happen. All right. All right. Thank you guys so much. I really right. appreciate it. Keep it posted. Best of luck. Okay. Good All luck. Right. We're Goodbye. rooting for you. Bye. Thank you. Nate, thank you again. I know Thanks this wasn't easy. Me. I really appreciate your vulnerability, man. Uh, it's been a pleasure getting to know you. And I wish you nothing but the best in the future. And I hope you continue down this path for healing. And uh, just thanks, man. I appreciate having me. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Any final thoughts you want to share or anything or? No, no. I, I mean, I think this is, uh, this is like weirdly like therapeutic. So I appreciate you having me here. Yeah. I can't thank you enough, man. You've been uh, very generous with your uh, vulnerability, man. Thanks. I really appreciate it. You're a role model to, to men out there. <laughs>
Truly, I really, I mean, you got me choked up when you got choked up, and I think it's okay when men cry, you know. Yeah. So, um, and you're gorgeous. <laughs> uh, there we go, final one. So hot. <laughs> uh, thanks for listening, guys. Don't forget to send in those questions at asknickacastme.com. Cast with a K for all things Ask Nick. Uh, we'll be back next week. Big week lined up. Get ready. It'll be exciting. And don't forget our, our special update show for uh, some, we had some texting office updates, oh. Ask Nick updates. That's tomorrow on Friday. Big special. You guys have been asking for it. So make sure you download it and check it out. Hope you enjoy. See you tomorrow. Hey guys, thanks for watching, but before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss any future videos like our Monday's Ask Nick for your favorite relationship stories and advice, and our Tuesday Bachelor Recaps. See you next time.